Hey there, how are you? One of the reasons why I got this laptop, this is a ThinkPad T580, is because I want to test new distributions and the way I think about testing distributions is about, you know, I, I like to try it on real hardware because running um, new distributions on the uh, virtual machine usually involves like a generic hardware and everything kind of runs perfectly on those uh, kind of virtual configurations, right? And especially with FreeBSD that I'm going to demonstrate shortly today, um, it's all about hardware compatibility because uh, a lot of laptops don't really work too well with FreeBSD, but some of them actually do. So uh, let's uh, let's get into it, right? So here we go. Let's uh, let's boot up from scratch and let me show you around. I have installed. Let's press one. I have installed uh, FreeBSD on this laptop and basically I did not do too much on it because uh, pretty much all of it just worked out of the box and this is quite good um, for, for this combination of hardware and software, right? Uh, so I have KDE Plasma installed and one more thing that I'm going to show you. So let's start up the SDDM and see how this looks. So let's go ahead and log in. And I have set it to mirror my screens. This should work on the capture card just as on my desktop here. Configure display settings. Let's uh, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. 150% should be fine. And you know, this is not working, right? Well, what can we do? This is one of the possible incompatibilities that we have stumbled upon at the very beginning. Let me just show you around uh, KD version. Where can we can we find it? It's 5.27.11, uh, I think, but let's check it just for, to make sure about KD. And once again, we don't have version number here. Then we will go here about the system. Okay, here we go. Uh, 5.27.11, so this should be as bugs free as possible since this is the latest LTS release and we're running FreeBSD 14.1 this is a Lenovo laptop and some other uh, little details let's uh, let's try to log out and see if it will um, do what we need to do with the uh, zoom level oops I was typing my password on the wrong oh that's fine SDDM is a bit weird uh, on when you have two displays. It only um, it only displays my password typing on one of the screens. Uh, however, we are are we zoomed in? We might be as well. Yeah, this looks zoomed in. So uh, it didn't apply immediately, but after logout and login, it kind of works. Um, the networking, uh, this is a display configuration, yeah, the networking widget from Kiri is not shown here because I think it doesn't support the out-of-the-box networking system on FreeBSD, but I'm not too familiar with this one. Uh, all I know is that during uh, FreeBSD setup I have um, configured my Wi-Fi access and it worked automatically. However, the networking speed is um, 802.11a, so it's kind of limited to 54 uh, megabits per second. And this is something that FreeBSD is actively working on. This is an Intel wireless card. Uh, apparently, uh, they have invested some, um, some resources and hired some people to work on this, so maybe the, uh, the support for Wi-Fi will be uh, better in the near future, but for now it, it does work out of the box, uh, but you might not get the um, the best speeds, right? There is a little hot hack that you can do with uh, free BSD and Wi-Fi to make it work faster. Basically, Wi-Fi box. Okay, so Wi-Fi box is uh, not that one, not that one. Okay, let's search better. Free BSD. Okay. Uh, Wi-Fi box is basically um, a Linux virtual machine with minimal 
resources used and the way it works is that you need to disable Wi-Fi on a free on your free BSD uh, you need to load up the driver uh, for your uh, passed through a Wi-Fi card in your virtual Linux box and then pass it back to the uh, main operating system as a, as a sort of a routing gateway, right? Um, you can read more about it here, but basically it comes down to what I said. Uh, so in this way you can get uh, a full speed while you're waking, waiting for the uh, native support, right? So what I'm using here is this uh, Firefox uh, fork and let me show you about LibreWolf. The version is 132, so this is pretty new. The way we install packages on, uh, on FreeBSD is via pkg command to let's sue as a root for now and sorry. Okay, wrong keyboard layout, no worries. So uh, this is the package manager. Uh, and for example, if you would like to install something from the repository, just type install and Firefox, for example, and it will fetch the latest data. It will uh, automatically uh, download stuff. It will prompt you to confirm, of course. There we go, Firefox 133 at the day of this video. This is pretty new. I think it, it is the latest one. So now it is fetching it and you will see how it works uh, basically the same as with any package manager on any uh, Linux system, right? So it's pretty similar and familiar, right? Uh, there we go. Firefox web browser started up. Not now, uh, but yeah, it, it works. So this is all that there is to it, to, to installing new packages, right? You can go to new tab, start up Emacs, for example. Uh, Emacs is also the latest uh, version 29.4. Uh, um, the way that uh, FreeBSD is set up is that you have, uh, let me show you here, uh, let's go to a new tab, uname dash a, okay, so this is, as I said, version 14.1. Uh, uh, and uh, the the way that FreeBSD is set up is that it is like a stable distribution that you could compare to Debian, for example, except that is, it is not a distribution, but rather a self-contained operating system, right? Everything that FreeBSD uh, makes for what you might be calling a distribution is actually their own uh, thing, right? The thing that we have here is, is version uh, th that is, and the packages that we are installing, for example, Firefox package, this is not a bundle from version 14.1. Uh, it's rather uh, some kind of a rolling distribution bolted on top of the uh, stable distribution. And I keep saying the word distribution because uh, I'm used to saying distribution, but um, par pardon me for that. But you know, when uh, the uh, new Emacs comes out, for example, uh, it will come out both for this uh, version of FreeBSD and for the previous one and maybe for the one even, even further beyond. I'm not sure how long are they supported, but the, the, the way they package them is that they package them simply for all of the version of um, all of the active version of FreeBSD. So if you're not ready to upgrade for, from 13 to 14, uh, you're good to go with the um, third party packages, right? Let's call them third par party packages because that's pretty much uh, what they are. So one of the things that I have did is I have installed a couple of games here. Uh, for example, Jump and Bump. Uh, this is one of my favorite local co-op couch uh, fun party games. It is not something that you will ever play uh, on your own, but basically this is what it looks like. You just jump across, you need at least two rabbits and they go to the second screen and that's when the game starts. Basically, it all comes down to where, where are we? There is one rabbit up there. Let's jump with this one. There is ice where you can skate and you jump on the head of the rabbit and then you collect some points and whoever reaches the agreed score wins the game right it's super fun for playing in the uh when you have guests around right you, you can play in four players on the same keyboard and even hook up a joystick uh, if you need one so one of the things that i wanted to show you is let me log out log out here and let's go back to the sddm 
there we go let's change our session and i want to go with hyperland because a lot of th uh, a lot of people think that uh, Wayland is not really possible on any operating system uh, other than the um, Linux, right? But uh, okay, we have still our page open. Let's put that to the uh, second screen. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let me call you. Let let me show you a fast fetch, for example. Fast fetch, and there we go. So we have this uh, FreeBSD version 14.1, uptime 12 minutes. Uh, what do we have? I have uh, 1200 uh, packages. This is our resolution on both of our monitors. Uh, Wayland session is running, uh, CPU, graphics, uh, and pretty much uh, everything that you are interested in seeing here. I can show you some mount points here. Uh, basically, what I have installed is a default uh, FreeBSD installation with ZFS, uh, or even on the uh, root partition. And this is pretty much what a lot of people pick uh, from. There is also UFS file system. Uh, but if you want some advanced features like snapshots, cloning, data integrity, uh, you might want to go with ZFS. Uh, it's a pretty good and very stable uh, file system, right? What else I have here? I have, uh, let, let me show you um, Rofi and let's see what else can we find here that is interesting to show. Uh, this is a bunch of uh, KD Plasma applications that have auto installed with the uh, root package. But yeah, I, I don't know. Let's say uh, VLC. I haven't even started this one yet. Continue. Also, one of the important things that I consider is uh, the ability to go to sleep and resume successfully. I'm not sure if I can do that as a user. No, I cannot. So let's switch to, uh, to root for this. Wrong keyboard again. And let's sleep for now. The system is going to sleep. It's going to shut down. And right now I'm seeing my power button uh, slowly breathing. I'm going to press it again and the system will now show you the console and how it's restoring the um, drivers and processes, right? And we should be back on Hyperland in no time. And there we go. Okay. So this was like a quick run with the uh, FreeBSD, right? Uh, what I would like to know is how much interest is in uh, showing you, you know, FreeBSD. How many of you are even interested in anything beyond Linux? How many of you are interested in um, free software in general, right? And uh, in recent times, there has been uh, increased talk about BSDs, right? They're all kind of cool. Uh, each one of them has its own unique advantages, but FreeBSD is like the most ready one for the desktop. Uh, so if any of you have been thinking in trying something new, learning something new, uh, perhaps FreeBSD could be the one that you could jump onto the uh, first one, right? OpenBSD is the first one that you might consider if you're building an advanced firewall or a router for your home. Uh, but that one is not that ready for the prime time on desktop. I mean, you can, of course, use it, but you might have a little bit more trouble with drivers and getting it uh, up and running. So FreeBSD is pretty good. Uh, also, if you are not installing on a laptop, it should be working on pretty much any uh, regular PC, right? So let me know what would you like me to dive into deeper about FreeBSD and what kind of video can I prepare? Because I'm not even sure how attractive this content is, right? So uh, one of the things that I have been uh, thinking uh, for myself is trying Gen 2 next. Uh, so if there is plenty of um, interest for more of the in-depth uh, research into FreeBSD, I will do that first. Uh, if you guys tell me no, then I'm going to switch to my next Linux distribution. Uh, and I'm going to see you in the next video, right? Bye.